provisional and complete we have two sections section 9 and 10 uh, which deal with uh, provisional and complete specification section 9 tells us that there are two types of specification one is a provisional and the other is a complete there is not much information that we gather about provisional and complete only the fact that when a provisional has to be filed and when it has to be followed up with a complete this is what we get to know from section 9 and from section 10 we get to know what are the internal requirements of a complete specification so section 10 is fully about internal requirements if you look at a specification a specification has two types of requirements internal and external requirements the scope of section 9 is to introduce to us that in india there are two types of specification a uh, provisional and complete if you file a provisional and it also describes the situations in which you can file a provisional when you have to follow it up with a complete it just gives you the timelines and it also gives you how you can follow up many provisionals with one complete it does not give the distinction between a provisional and a complete similarly section 10 does not tell the difference between a provisional and a complete we know that yes 10 Uh, 3c talks about claims it tell it should end with a claim but the difference is not mentioned if you need to know where the difference is the difference lies in form 3 so the first thing we need to remember is that the provisional precedes the complete the provisional is always filed first and it is followed by the complete now we get this from section 9 which says that a complete specification shall be filed within 12 months from the date of filing the application which had a provisional we understand from section 91 that if an application is filed accompanied by a provisional specification a complete has to be filed within 12 months it also tells us you cannot file a provisional when you are filing a convention application or an application under the pct you find that information in parenthesis in brackets not being a conventional application or an application file under pct so we understand that a provisional should always be followed up with a complete within 12 months and if you are filing an international application you cannot file an international with a provisional it has to be filed only with a complete this section also tells us what happens if you don't file a complete it it ends by saying if the complete is not filed the application will be treated as abandoned so it not withdrawn it will be treated as abandoned this sets the relationship between a provisional and a complete so there is a 12 month timeline and it can vary depending on the disclosure the 12 month timeline can vary we will see the instances where the timeline varies or when the 12 month time kicks in and it also says that the provisional in itself the word meaning means that it is something of a temporary or a transient nature it it by itself has to be followed by the complete so the provisional is a stop gap measure it is done to preserve the priority and it is done to ensure that it is followed up by a complete if it is not followed up by a complete then the priority is lost the application itself is lost now the second thing we need to remember is that you could have many provisionals and you could follow it up with one complete now we get that from section 9 2 which states that where there are two or more applications filed and the important thing to understand here is that the applications has to be cognate the the invention which are cognate or of which one is a modification of the other so you could file multiple provisionals the only thing is that all the provisionals should be related to each other they should be aspects of the same invention or they should be capable of being combined into one invention and the word used in the act is cognate or it is a modification of another and when we talk about a modification it's not a modification of an inventive step kind of a modification a big or a drastic modification they are minor modification which will still bring them under the ambit of the unity of invention they are considered as one invention if a series of provisionals are filed say in a year a series of provisionals are filed and all those provisionals are related to each other the word used is cognate in a sense that they could all be treated as parts of the same invention and in the opinion of the controller if they all constitute a single invention then the controller can 
ask the applicant to file one complete specification in respect of all the provisionals. So this provision gives the uh, power to the controller to allow the applicant to file one complete when there are many provisionals and the requirement is that they sh should be cognate or they should be a modification of one another. If this happens, the question that arises is when do you ascertain the 12 month period? The 12 month period is ascertained from the first disclosure. So that is mentioned here from the date of filing of the earliest provisional specification. Now this is logical because if it is not the earliest one, say if the 12 month were to start from the last one, then it will give an unfair advantage to a person taking this route. It gives an un unfair advantage to a person filing a provisional because a person is going to get more than 12 months to make their complete application. So it is always from the first disclosure, from the first provisional and the time starts ticking, the 12 months start ticking from the filing of the first provisional and the complete has to be filed within 12 months from the first provisional. So bear this in mind, this is not a technique to extend the time. You only have 12 months from the first disclosure. So the law states that the time will run from the first disclosure.